Are you struggling with editing flaky skin? Well, I'm gonna share with you one of my favorite tools in Photoshop, how you can remove it quickly and easily. Hi, I'm Kelly Brown. I've been a portrait photographer for 18 years and I have been using Photoshop to remove and improve some unavoidable problems that we face each day in our photography. All right, so I've got a set of twins here and when we zoom in, you're gonna see that one of our little babies has a lot more flaky skin than the other. Now, when it comes to flaky skin, you're gonna find it more problematic around the hands and the feet and sometimes around the, their other joints as well. This little one seems to have a few, few larger pieces around the eyelid over here, which we're going to work on, and then a few more on the arm over here. One thing we have to be careful of when we're removing areas like this that come into contact with any creases or lines, we have to be very careful that we don't lose the consistency in terms of the texture and the tone of the skin. So that's why I use the patch tool. It's more precise and it allows me um, to create a much more consistent result when I am zoomed in and looking to continue some of those lines. If I was to use the spot healing brush tool, for example, especially on this little one here on the eyelid. Now that's going to obviously remove the line, the crease in the eyelid, which is not what we want to do because it's there, it's part of the baby. So what I'm going to do here with the patch tool is follow that line, circling the flaky skin and follow that line. So that's what I mean when it allows me to create a more uh, precise result. So let's go back out. And when it comes to editing flaky skin like this, I need to be careful that I'm not overdoing it. So I'm not going to zoom in to 400%. That's at 200, even at 300%, we're really close. Now, when you come in, you see a lot of imperfections. No one's going to be looking at a photo like this that close. So what I like to do is zoom out to around 100%, have a look at some of the, the main areas of concern in terms of the piece on the fingers, around the wrist here, coming up into the elbow, and then a couple of those larger pieces on the face that are really standing out. Some of these softer areas, they can be improved by using different Photoshop actions and plugins that soften the skin. So it's usually only these bigger pieces of skin that I will use the patch tool for first. So let's start up here on the face. I'm gonna create a copy layer, Command J to work in here. Okay, so some of these areas up here, they're gonna be really quick. The trick when you are sourcing the information, when you select the flaky skin, when you're sourcing that information, you want to be very careful where you drag that to. So if I drag it to another area that's got a bit of flaky skin, it's gonna copy it and take it back. We don't want that. We wanna to go to a nice smooth area uh, that has similar texture and tone. So when we're doing it, we're not creating any repetition and we're not replacing one problem area with another problem. Okay, so you can move quite quickly when you are zoomed in here you can see now when I turn that layer on and off the flaky skin's gone all right so moving very quickly around this area now some parents might like you to keep the flaky skin but I tend to stick to if something's not going to be there in two weeks, then I tend to remove it. In between, and we've got these little darker lines here as well. We'll come back to those and I'll show you a quick trip, trick in how to reduce those as well. When babies frown. Okay, so in here, we've got our dark little line underneath the eye. So I'm gonna circle that and I'm going to follow that line And then the same when it comes to eyelashes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the eye, 
lash line. There we go. And then again on the top eyelid, we're going to follow that line so it stays intact. And then up here, we'll continue with the eye. as we work our way around. Now when we get down here to the fingers, this is where we will have to be careful. So we've got lines coming this way and then we've got lines going that way. So when you're working with a larger piece like this, my advice is to remove all the smaller pieces around it then to give you more information to source from. So I'm just following those lines up here. So as the, the fingers, where the, the fingers are placed, you can see this one's a little bit sharper and then it gets softer as it moves further away from that focal plane. Um, so what I can do is if I want to you know, continue with these lines here and keep it consistent, I could drag that information forward to the first finger or I could work on it a little differently in terms of having a look at the size of it, do I bring it forward down here because the consistency in terms of texture of the skin is going to be the same. But what happens is it removes a lot of these lines here. If it's not a problem, I mean it's going to be on the grand scheme of things, you know, very minute. You're not going to notice that a couple of little lines and wrinkles in the finger are missing. But if you were concerned, then you would start to look at um, sourcing information from one of the other fingers to make sure it's nice and consistent. All right, so now we're getting to one of the more problematic areas. And what I need to do here is make sure that I keep the consistency and texture nice and even. I'm going to follow this line here, see how it comes up and meets that area of the chin. So we're just going to follow that to make sure that that stays intact. And again, just here. And again on the cheek. You can see why the patch tool is one of my favorites. It does a lot. So now that I'm working on this area, I can't bring it over here because I've got another problem there. I could bring it this way or I could continue working this way. So cleaning one area up to create more areas to source from. We don't want to create any repetition. Okay, so as we're cleaning this area up, and we start to come back up here into this area. Now I'm keeping it quite close to the chin there in terms of the shadows. And then again this way, we'll clean up some of these areas so I can come along here. Now I could start by doing all of this area I think I'm going to avoid this part where the cheek is first and come down here. Now I've got one area here which has got a small separation there so I can come in between it and then dragging that back down here. Now I'm deciding to go this way to have a look at the texture. And if I find that it's not quite matching, then I can come back this way. And that works better. And one 
just up here in the eyebrow. Okay, so let's turn that layer on and off. We've got before and after. And we've been able to keep that sort of consistency and texture throughout the skin by coming in and following all of the lines um, and creases of this beautiful baby. Now, next tip to soften these little frown lines. So I'm going to use the patch tool. Now we circle that frown line. Again, I need to make sure that I'm following um, the the texture of the skin and making sure that it's nice and consistent. So I'm going to stay relatively close in terms of where I source that information from. Now I don't want to remove the frown line completely, but what I'm going to do is come up to Edit, Fade Patch Selection, and the Command Shift F key are your shortcut keys for this. So it's going to bring up this little fade box and now I can fade the opacity of that selection so it's no longer at 100%. And I can bring it down. I mean, if it was my baby and it frowned, I don't think I'd want it removed, but I might just want to soften it and make it look a little bit more comfortable. And then deselect. So we've got before and after. And then what you would do is just continue to come around um, the baby on the other side and remove the flaky skin as I've done previously to the other baby. Now this eye here is one area that could be of concern for you, especially because of those long eyelashes. So this is where um, I'm looking to see if there's other eyelashes growing in the same direction that I can easily source information from. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it is not. So because that white area is divided by an eyelash coming through it, a dark eyelash, I'm going to go to this side first carefully selecting that information there and I'm going to source from this area over here and it looks like it's going to line up pretty well. Now sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You might need to come in with the clone tool to fix some of these areas but you should be able to achieve some good results with the patch tool. don't want this line here So we've managed to soften it and keep those eyelashes exactly where they are. Now, the same way that we reduced that frown line, you can reduce some of the darker circles under the eye and achieve some really great results. And that's why the patch tool is definitely one of my favorite tools. So if you want to learn more about how to fix different problems in Photoshop, that you can't always get right in camera, even though we need to get it right in camera as much as we possibly can. You can see more tutorials on kellybrownonline.com and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can see more videos coming your way. And if you've got any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. See you later.